<laughs> How many episodes are we gonna over under five? We see this news clip. But by the way, I have to say his good looks definitely shaped the heroism. Yes. Yeah. The the uh, what do you call it? The narrative. Yes. If he was a fucking pig, right? They'd be like, this guy almost killed a bunch of people. Holy shit, he's good looking. Hey, get over here. I know. If 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 he was a Bruce Valanche looking <laughs> motherfucker, or, they'd have him thrown in prison. That uh, weird looking guy who filled in for Captain Lee. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy would be in solitary Captain confinement. Sean. Well, they would have made up a story. Captain CNN would have made up a story of him. Like he left the boat. He actually called before it crashed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Hi, hello, and welcome to another brand spanking new episode of the Another Podcast Network presents a Patreon exclusive recap of Bloodic Dan on uh, episode two. Joining us this evening is one real Nicholas Davis. Ahoy, mates. Also joining us this evening is one Gabriela Baragan. Hola, que tal? <laughs> and also joining us this evening is Patrick. Hmm. Permission to come aboard. Permission, Permission granted. granted. So we got a. <clears throat> I don't know. Should we? I don't want to call it clearing the air because I think the hatchet's buried. But um, fans of the show will know uh, that we've had a bit of a feud with Gabby uh, in weeks past because of that one time that she just fell asleep. I on almost us fell asleep again tonight. So you're welcome. I'm here. You can feel free. That's to pull that co- that's that cockiness that we love to see in <laughs> Gabriela Baragan. And you can feel free to pull that. Mic yeah, pull that you. You sucker. You, in. you don't lean I towards did. it. It leans towards you. Oh, yeah. I did. Look how. Oh. There you go. Oh. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Look out. This is also on video. Brian's going to have fun with that. Whatever. Anyway. Okay, fine. guys. Hi, so Brian. Um, we have got to just check in with you. Uh, say, how you doing? Uh, say, hey. Yeah. So we're going to catch up with Gabby and her journey thus far on the show. And then we were t- we had this little uh, tug of war with uh, Bravo PR. They said, hey, oh, you want to openly talk about the well, feud that you've been having with Bravo? No, no, no. Okay, we're getting great. along swimmingly. But great. the problem is, is we wanted to have Gabby on. Gabby wanted to come on. She's in town. Today she was doing her OTFs. What do you call those things where you talk in front of a green screen? In the moment. Pickups. 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 Okay. So she's like, hey. Uh, you know, Talking yeah, heads. come on. And then so I talked to Bravo and they said, what do you want to do? And I said, well, we want to have her recap the show. We want to do our own version of Galley Talk. You know, we have uh, people on from the. Can I, can I interject, sure. please? So we remember, we remember, wow, I have a speech impediment. Um, remember when you guys interviewed me via Zoom, how yeah. shitty the footage what, was? Yeah, it wasn't fun. And the. The connection in the yeah, Caribbean right, right. doesn't work as well. I was like, no, this is not going to work unless I'm in the studio with these boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I and this is the only time I can do this because who knows when I'll be back. Right. It might be six weeks from now. It might be never. Who right. knows? It's an open door, though. Gabby. You're want... a sea rat. We have no idea where you're going to be at any given moment. <laughs> Nor do true. you. Nor do you. Right. Absolutely. And I, I agree, though. It's much better to have you in here. I felt like uh, our last interview where we just wanted to joke in the beginning and then squash the beat was more contentious because the weird zoom delay and our jokes weren't landing yep and then when you you were about to hung up you were like what the fuck was that (laughs) (laughs) you were just like simple chuck (laughs) why did i do that (laughs) yeah Um, i uh, literally was being simple chuck when i was like don't take me for granted i made a mistake (laughs) but i i i got over it when once you showed I know, up that second I know time. that so I don't want to rehash it we're past I'm well, just saying I'm not past it. I'm well, saying on, Dylan's presence yeah and his feeling his pretentiousness mm-hmm. in person feels more better more better yep yeah much yeah. better in person thank you you're welcome it's better to have I, you in person too um <laughs> you know still very upset Extremely <laughs> right. But we're going to try and get past it though, right? We're going to do our best. We're going to try. So what we're going to do tonight is we're going to. We can do this. We'll get through we're it. We're going to break down episode two break down. of Dan Anda. Dan you Anda. should do the entire podcast in the rest of the season. In, in an old accent. It's the, like, Look at Dylan in his natural only... habitat being Jewish with his fucking running shoes. <laughs> the only hey, well, nice. accent managed. that I can do is Australian, but I'm not going to do it the entire season we'll you know pick our spots but what we're going to do tonight is break down episode two in earnest we also have gabby here to provide c-rat insights into how the whole thing is going about 
We're on sailing right now. Gabby has more experience on a motor yacht. She is perfectly poised to help us with the contextual breakdown mm-hmm. of Bravos Below Deck, Dan Onda, episode Dan two. Onda. So let's start. Great hosting. I swear to God, if this has CBD or THC in it, I will literally ruin all of your lives. It is not laced with anything. It is gummy <laughs> drop flu. I don't trust men. All right. So, um, guys, <laughs> I was going to say I don't trust sea rats, but that, that wouldn't You shouldn't. Have been. They're all terrible. We know that. I, I didn't need to say it. That's why. <laughs> all right. We have to get into our fan favorite segment, Thoughts and Knots. That's where... We speak of the show generally and assign a rating system. You guys talk about it the way you normally talk about it. I'm just going to be here to laugh. Yeah, and okay. And interject and talk shit. And we go on tangents, so that's when you can really yes, shine. I Are you going to give knots, though? I can't. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, Pat. All right. Ryan is wonderful. How many knots do you give it? Hold on. i got to give my thoughts first, Dylan. That's the name of the segment. All right. Ryan is wonderful. And by wonderful, I mean he's a sociopath. Yeah. And one of the more telltale signs of a sociopath is they feel Lighting that they it, understand small animals on fire. That too. He probably skinned rabbits when he yeah. was a child. Oh, he definitely did that. Yeah. And then you see him with that knife. Play it off like, oh, that's what our family did. Right in Philly. Oops, I don't think. <laughs> now, Dylan, I know you're going to have a lot to say about Ryan in this episode, but it's undeniable Tons! that this <laughs> sociopath feels like he understands human beings. Right. He thinks right. he's so smart yeah. that he's always five steps beyond them. And the true delusionals, and I'm guilty of this sometimes too, is taking their personal experience and applying it to everything in life. So what he knows is the scum that frequents STK. Right. Now what he's going to do is apply that philosophy to every single person that walks on board until he gets fired. But your thoughts, your pot. Well, Dylan Ryan from Philly. That is until a TikToker group doesn't show up and someone some, with some real and actual palate. Right. But thus far. That's what I mean, though. What's it should be infuriating you is that he's five out of five, this motherfucker. Uh, Dell Ed. We'll talk about it. All right. Well, he's fun. Uh, I'm liking it. So I'm, I don't enjoy it as much as yachting. I'll tell you that, Gabby. But it's pretty fun. Uh, I, I really love chefs that are so obsessed with themselves. Mm hmm. That they just say, fuck everyone and do what the fuck they want. Yeah. You like that? Yes, I love it. Well, you have to be good at cooking, though, to do that. Um, uh, Ryan is also, not good at cooking. He flipped pies for many years and then worked at STK. You have to understand sarcasm as well. Dylan. Oh, got it. Sorry. Uh, how many pots? 60. Nick. Uh, first of all, I want to give uh, Pat's rating systems tonight a one out of five. Yeah. Where are, they're all over the yeah. five okay. out of five. I give you a D minus. No, he's, five meals he's uh, served for this particular charter. And the fucking uh, Instagram whores are eating it up. Literally. They love it. You're referring to the guys. Why are you yeah. on Instagram? Aren't you like 40? I'm not on Six. Instagram. <laughs> Pat is slowly becoming a social media savant. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. <laughs> He's very good with Facebook. I'll tell you that. He's and he, very good with Facebook. He just picks up on things <laughs> so quickly. Like we just learned how to see if a message on IG has been read. Right. Mm-hmm. And okay. next. I got my first will, tweet out last uh, month. Uh, yeah. The next thing we'll do is. Which changed the course of one of the most popular reality TV shows of all time. <laughs> yeah. Man, do these stones have ripples. <laughs> Okay, That's my right. thoughts and knots. Oh, yeah. Thoughts and knots. God damn it. <laughs> Sorry, I'm throwing off all no, of your no, guys. No, no, no. This, this is what we no, do. This it, is what we do. It sounds like it's a little stilted sometimes, and then you listen back, it's like, wow, we just know how to just kind of weave a web. Yeah. Yeah. It's really, it sounds better than a like a butterfly, now? bite like that a That sounds bee. weird. Uh, I didn't like something? Ayana's weave in the reunion. You I wanted to do say that. Do you like that. my weave? Uh, do you have a weave? That's, in, that's your hair. How do you know? I can tell. You can't tell. I can't. Is that your hair? You have no fucking idea. That's her hair. Um, but uh, I absolutely do. No, you don't. I can't. Yeah, I do. No, you don't. Yeah, I do. Oh, my God. If I'm so excited knows, to play this Pat. game. We have to play this game. If anyone knows game. it's Pat, he's the only one dating a black woman. Well, he's married. You have no fucking clue. I can see a bad weave and I can see definite Can you see real a hair. weave, though? Right. Uh, yeah. Just no. a weave. It's, I'm excited to play the We're game. We're going to play the game. Yeah. Yeah. Play, let's play the game. Uh, I, uh, tomorrow. Weave or no weave. Another podcast. Weave or no weave. Yeah. Yeah. Believe or do not believe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> God, a, thank you, Gabby. That's so great. That was great. Believe um, or not believe. Now get out. That's my lane. <laughs> the <laughs> <Fuck> puns. <you. laughs> uh, but not this episode. This 
this season, it's going to be fun, but it seems a little bit more scripted than some of the other mm. seasons, yeah. which may be fine because we're getting some redundancy and some storylines, and uh, two of the the stewardesses uh, wanting to fuck the captain. That's a new one. That's right. going to be exciting. Love and, and don't forget the captain being completely fucking down with it. What a stud. <laughs> what a stud. Uh, you think oh he'd my be like, God, hey, this I'm is inappropriate, but he's like, all right, gonna, nice, I'm watching Oh, my you. God, am I touching myself? Oh, I'm not <laughs> touching myself. Gabby, uh, what? This is a, uh, point. no one has signed up for the flight of the Phoenix deer. Do not touch yourself. And also, <laughs> we're in the middle of Nick's pods oh, right me, now. Oops, I have taken a long Fuck. time and invited tangents, so some of this is on me. But <laughs> uh, I, I think the episode was good. But they keep teasing us with our first night out and the possible ball of snakes. I don't like this this methadone drip they're giving giving us. Uh, nonetheless, it was methadone a decent drip. seventy-two drip. Pops. Here is where I'm going to pick the ball up or the baton and keep running. A lot. Guys, the main problem that I have with this season, and again, we're only in episode two, so this could change, but two, things, drip. two things that <laughs> Nick brought up. One, um, maybe I, I not, wouldn't go so far as to say scripted, but definitely Comedia Del Andy. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very... Yachting has... A, it's a dysfunctional family. There's a tightness. It feels less insert here than this season does Mm -hmm. and also i'm very concerned about the lack of ball of snakes because there is just no sexual chemistry between any of the sea rats outside of up the hierarchical ladder jason is a sadistic love addict but i don't think he's going to be fucking the crew um but if that does my god wow what a fucking rookie mistake you I had to turn on notifications because you? we had to get you here in an Uber. Well, because, because you don't Pat have an Apple auto. Watch and you have right. an actual watch, which Sorry. no one can read, including you. Gabby, are there ever charters where it, the mandate <laughs> from management is that there's no hooking up? It's the only kind of jewelry I can wear. Okay. It looks nice. Well, it does look nice, but you know, bullshit. Um, you cannot hook up with your crewmates. You cannot, especially HODs. But, of departments. But right. there's is there ever a mandate that says that, like, by sea law? In your contract, when you sign it, there are things, just like when you work at a restaurant or for Uber. Obviously written on invisible ink. Lyft? I've was seen it, you see it, rats Was it, was it Lyft action. or Uber? I Ubered. I Ubered. Okay. So, like, <clears throat> there's a thing that says in your contract, like, fraternization, just like the military, mm-hmm. is just frowned upon and, like, not okay. Gotcha. You all sign it. You're like, okay, I'm getting paid this much. I'm going to work on this yacht. I'm not going to fuck anyone. It's all good. But then. But then you get a hot captain. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, oh, my God. He's so hot. And hot like, captain. But what makes it weird is that like um, just. Dylan. What's your name? Dylan. Felicia. So what Felicia was building on is that like it's a very intimate setting. Mm-hmm. So we have to iron their underwear. Mm. Right. We have to clean. You see the shit stains? Their toilet. No, it's not the shit stains. You know what gets me is that when I'm cleaning my captain's cabin and I can, it's apparent that they can't even make it in the toilet. Yeah, boy. Oh, uh, the piss? Well, that'd be a turnoff, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Mm. But actually, that's, that's what I'm going with. You could be reading your uh, Sherlock Holmes clues wrong. Maybe yeah. it has such a powerful stream and large urethra that the splash <laughs> is coming out on the rim of the bowl, no, which I, is often what happens. I had Poseidon well, getting angry. Then I can go to Mean Girls and say, like, I'm a virgin, but I, I have a double wide set vagina and I need massive tampons to hmm. fill it up. We're not doing that. I, what I I'm, lost what I'm, the said, connection no, there. I didn't understand what she said. I just didn't get it. I mean, either. I, I want to say this. Well, maybe no it didn't land. That's fine. About. But can I'm I finish what I was food. saying? Yeah. And your shoe is big, and it, it's a fr- it's it's a fronting. Okay. Yeah. Back it off. It's recycled material. What I'm saying is, brought is, to you by Rothy's. Is that how am I supposed to respect my captain when I go into his cabin to clean it? Yeah. And he can't even make it in the fucking <laughs> toilet. I agree. Well, would you say, like, how could you respect uh, a higher up if they were drinking constantly all day? Yeah, but no one does that on boats. We wow. seem to be getting in a who's a who's on first type thing, but I, I want to reiterate that maybe possibly what you are seeing is that he has a giant urethra on the stream <laughs> and splashing and guiding. <laughs> I on think the you're talking about yourself, and you need to see a doctor. So <laughs> last we left off, hot captain had taken the boat out of the marina in the middle of the night with six inches of water underneath the boat. Bear in mind, his bosun is a former stripper, and his deckhands are more into meditation. But do we than also boating. know, like, how deep is the draft? Uh. 
How Gabby, deep Ga- is okay. your draft? Gabby, oh. I'll tell you something. You're oh. more than welcome to come in here and oh, sing shit. and talk here about wide set vaginas, but do not punch logical holes in our bits. <laughs> Don't do it. And also try to not to speak when someone else is talking. Just, just, I just a couple mm, rules. Nick, stop slapping your feet around. All, All right. right. So, um, Rain. This just completely fits into the pattern okay, of Hot Captain. Mm-hmm. Um, he has children from London to Perth. He's drunk on carnal uh, desires. But he's been there before. Danger is really the only thing that can get a muscle moving down there. Exactly. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And uh, it's been too hot a captain for too long. I, Did you guys see the news feed that they showed? Oh, yeah. Yeah, like, we've seen it twice now. Two though. episodes in a row. The like, horror and heroism of hot captain. I love how they <laughs> interview him like he just, I don't know. Sully. Saved a cat from like a tree. Sully. Yeah. yeah. Sully. Not that he... Rammed it into a marina. Yeah. So um, in an M. Night Jammy Man type twist, the stripper points the flashlight at all the right rocks and they scooch <laughs> out of there. I, um, I'm so happy. <laughs> <laughs> That's getting better. Yeah. Uh, I. With his 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 <laughs> adventure. Oh, thank you. His adventure seeking and his risk taking. I already made the analogy to the client of Ben Stiller in Along Came Polly. <laughs> and Love. we had. An awesome comment. I don't know if you guys... I don't even know if I told oh, you Oh, my God. Does that warm my heart when we have lunatics who listen to us? I don't mean to say lunatics, but like true, true fans with a heart as as big as an elephant's. And uh, this one with a heart as big as an elephant actually reached out a couple months ago and mentioned how we oftentimes bring up uh, uh, Gladys, our archivist, who has been dropping the ball. And she was like, can I be the archivist? Oh, and I was like, I love this person. Who I was is like, this person? Uh, uh, her her name on Patreon is Sandra Archive. Oh, my <laughs> God. I love Sandra. And she said, I'll have it finished in about three months. She's listening to all our shows and oh. doing like a gloss uh, glossary. We and do not deserve this kind of fandom. We really don't. And after no. the premiere of our Below Deck Down Under premiere recap, mm-hmm. Sandra Archive said, Thought I would mention, you guys have discussed Along Came Polly many times. See Below Deck Reg, Season 7, Episode 6, Abby Now Homelish, Ashton Still Gross. Uh, we mentioned Along Came Polly there. So thank you, Sandra thank the you, Archivist. Thank you, Sandra the Archivist. She didn't archivist. give the minutes, though. So okay, she's kinda... can you just let someone have a minute? She said give her three months. Oh, but oh. what about the movie with... with um, Love you, ben Sandra. Stiller, That's un- unbelievable. Um, when he goes to Mexico 40 and marries dates? A, psych- a psychopath. Oh, that is uh, the heartbreak kid. The heartbreak. Oh, kid. I haven't seen it. Yeah. I funny? thought that that no. relates a little bit to what we're talking about—just the disillusion of falling into a situation. Yeah. And then you being the the bad guy. Right, in all right, of this. right. Yeah. And that goes with the long came Polly as well. Totally, totally. But and Malin too. Ackerman. I mean, <laughs> yeah, she's so beautiful and and huge crush. Who on was her. that? I think it was her, but I'll take that. I blame. think it was Gabby. <laughs> <laughs> no, throat farts. We do it all the time. Fucking throat farts. All right. So, um, well, that no- night, Jamie, man, type twist. They get out of there, <laughs> and everyone is doing TikTok dances in togas ab- above deck. Mm-hmm. How much would you need to be paid to choreograph a TikTok dance once a week for a year? Well, Dylan. Should we do one after we record tonight? Absolutely. Yes. Not paying, I answer the question. But I know how much they get paid, so I'm not going to talk because you asked him, not me. How much do they get paid? How much would you want? Oh, sorry. How much would you need to be paid to choreograph a TikTok dance once a week, 52 times a year? How, many, how long are we coordinating? Yeah. 30 seconds. Well, I cr- you got to oh. work on the dance moves, though. Right. No, I know, but no, the content's 30 seconds. Well, how, how long are we talk? How much time in? Yeah, yeah. It's 30 seconds. He just fucking said no, it. No, not the TikTok oh. itself. The practice. Cap it in an hour. Oh, hour oh, worth of practice. Okay, okay, $300. Okay. $1,000 a that's video. That's how I try to price my time. $1,000 a video? Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Now, the reason I asked is because I'm, I'm, I'm going to mm-hmm. ask you how much you'd get, you would need to get paid to do something else a little bit later. Okay. So I just keep that. Oh, I knew you were gay. Uh, all right. So, <laughs> guys, we have a lot more to get into. Patreon. Okay. Uh, a ton more to get into. <laughs> you ever go to a work event or jury duty and go, oh, man, I have a breakout. What am I going to do? 
Well, we can tell you how to help, okay? Because that's happened to me. It's happened to plenty of us. We've all had struggles with our skin, and that's why we are excited to partner with Apostrophe, the sponsor of this episode. Apostrophe is a prescription skincare company that offers science-backed oral and topical medications that are clinically proven to help clear acne, okay? At Apostrophe, an expert dermatology team will create a personalized treatment plan that is perfectly tailored to your skin, Okay. Uh, simply fill out Apostrophe's online quiz about your skin goals and medical history, then snap a few selfies, and a board-certified dermatologist will create your initial customized treatment plan in d- so fast. Apostrophe treats all types of acne, from hormonal acne to facial acne, and even chest acne and butt acne. They treat breakouts from head to toe. Um, the service experience was incredible. Okay, It was very, very quickly uh, done, the whole thing, going through the quiz, uh, meeting with a dermatologist, uh, interfacing with them, communicating. It's all good that it's all good that it is at apostrophe. Okay. We have a special deal for our audience. Save $15 off your first visit with an apostrophe provider at apostrophe.com slash below deck. When you use our code below deck, this code is only available to our listeners. Okay. To get started, just go to apostrophe.com slash below deck and click begin visit and then use our code below deck at sign up and you'll get your first visit for only five dollars. That's apostrophe A P O S T R O P H E dot com slash below deck and use that code below deck to get your first dermatologist crafted treatment plan for five dollars. And we thank Apostrophe for sponsoring the podcast. Hey, y'all, let's take a quick sec to talk about our best buddies in the podcast sponsor culinary world. It's a small world, but they are our best buddies. They are Green Chef. What is Green Chef? It's a CCOF certified meal kit company. Green Chef makes eating well easy with plans to fit every single lifestyle. Green Chef's keto and paleo options give you the premium proteins and vital veggies you need to conquer your day. And listen, with Green Chef, you can avoid avoid long lines at the grocery store because of how convenient Green Chef is. The other day, we just didn't have anything in the house to eat. And my wife was like, what are we going to do for our nighttime sustenance, also known as supper, also known as dinner? I said, I don't know. And she said, why don't you go to Whole Foods? I said, I don't like going to Whole Foods. The parking lot is too crazy. I get very, very stressed out. People try to back into me, and I don't like that. And also, there are people standing outside the grocery store asking me to sign things uh, that and donate to causes that are incredible causes, but I just am too greedy. So you don't want to go to the grocery store. You don't want to feel guilt and wait in long lines. You want to get Green Chef, which offers 24 changing recipes to choose from every week, so you'll never even get bored, okay? Go to greenchef.com slash below deck 130 and use code below deck 130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Again, that is Green Chef. Green Chef? No, it's not Green Chef. It's Green Chef. That's G R E E C H E F dot com slash below deck 130 and use code below deck 130 to get $130 off plus free shipping. Okay. Green Chef, it's the number one meal kit for eating well. Now, um, Aisha's leadership, uh, leadership style is best buddy. We'll see how that goes for her. Mm-hmm. I, you know, sometimes you need to, you know, carry a big stick. Um, we get our first, where am I in our notes? We get our first excursion of the trip, but before we get there, I want to mention Culver. We can talk about Gronkowski a little bit later, but he is Gronkowski. He's incredible. I like anybody who describes themselves as Gronkowski. Sure. Uh, Gronkowski, the actual guy, who knows what he's doing behind closed doors, but the idea of him is this fun, affable right. dummy, and dummy. I love it. Uh, all right, so our first excursion Did of the trip. Did anyone else notice that his... Never mind. I'm not allowed to speak. His teeth were weird? I have weird teeth. <laughs> we go snorkeling. Like throw stones. Now, we hop in these Fuck waters. Fuck you, my teeth are fine. And I said I have weird teeth. We see the fertile <laughs> landscape of the Whit Sunday Isles with the corals and the anemones and the clownfish. And Pat, how much would you need to be paid to get in these waters I would not. and mm. swim around with all these sea creatures? As like a tour guide? No. You're on the vacation, you jump in the water, you gotta snorkel. Mm. I'm afraid of water, so that's why I bring it up. <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm yeah. going to throw it to Nick right after this because, I mean, I don't know what you guys would do. This must have mm. stricken fear in both of you. Well, 50000 
fifty thousand dollars. Risking my life, Gabby. Yeah, that's. I'm scared oh, of water. Man. I Nick? wish you had more scared of water and heights. That's fifty TikToks. Yeah. <laughs> I would. I don't know. I'd just rather live another day. So um, as the morning proceeds, uh, Jamie calls Brit Brittany yeah, because, um, you know, what else would you call her, right? Um, she is not happy about this, which I get. She's probably had um, a lifetime of this kind of correction. But once you are not under the stewardship of the clinically insane people that named you Brittini, <laughs> yeah. don't defend the name. Just change it. So I know she's a listener, as most sea rats are. Brit, your name's Brit. Blame your parents if you don't like it. Yeah. People have a but life no, to live. No, it's not Brit. It's Brittini. No, no, it's Brittini. No. Brittini. Brittini. Yeah. But yeah. Tini it's B-R-I. T-T-I-N-I. It's too difficult. Her name's Brit. It's too difficult because everyone in America is a fucking idiot. All right. So let's move on to fuckface. This man, you... I'll call her Martini if she wants. I'm getting mad. Okay. This man continues to make you. me <laughs> love him and want to drown him. We're talking about Ryan. Yes, he's an overconfident little fuckface, but I kind of dig his philosophy on breakfast a little bit. We're not turning this kitchen into dupars. Don't even ask them. Just put food out. Breakfast has a very low ceiling. They'll be happy. Unless they are anything other than TikTok children. Now, oh shit! you do this to Barry or Chuck... Oh, you're fucked. You're fucked. I mean, what's going to happen to you, fuckface? It's going to be really, really bad. But this has been kind of your advice for the chefs, essentially. I remember when you, uh, Rachel was running a diner and you were disgusted that they were making her do that. Yes. So isn't that... Uh, what? You, well, listen. You and Ryan are more alike than you think. That's why I said he confuses me. I want to love him and drown him. But I'll, I'll <laughs> have two, two sticking points here. One, I don't like his attitude, obviously. Mm -hmm. He still feels as though he is in the back of STK. And you're not anymore. I don't know what's happened. I don't know how many DUIs you've gotten or how many people you've pissed off. But you're on a boat now, okay? Uh, know your station. You're on a boat now. Yeah, um, he's a sack of shit. One last note on this. He, uh, so well, we already... have to talk about the actual food, which is my second <laughs> sticking One point. But go oh, ahead. Oh, okay, let me just break in here. His motto is work harder. Or work smarter, smarter, not harder. harder. Look, douchebag, you're not a forklift operator. You're in a high-end industry where you're fucking people are paying like right. tens of thousands of dollars right. a day. Beat me. Here's you a cunt! P Here's a PB&J sandwich. <laughs> Do your job! Okay, so let's talk about the breakfast. The Canadian bacon is as loose as can be. It is not cooked. It's warmed up simply. Um, the eggs are not poached. They're cooked in some kind of <laughs> McMuffin mold. And they're either not set properly oh, no. or they're drowning in finishing oil. Um, zero, <laughs> zero pots. You said they're drowning in finishing oil. Yeah. What is finishing oil? It's the high quality EVOO that sits at every um, expediting table, on station. On the table when yeah. you get there. Holy no, shit. No, yeah, not on the not on the table though, Gabby. At the expediting station, you know, they'll hit it with a little salt and drizzle it with a little EVOO quality oh, stuff. Oh my God. I feel even more poor now. Thank you. No problem. So zero pots. Tabasco is set on the table to ruin the dish further. Um, the guests ask hot captain to join for dinner, and then they take off uh, to go snorkeling. We covered this, but um, were your nerves fried? Hmm? Were your nerves fried? <laughs> I just why do you have to? Episode. Why do you have to say nerves? Well, like because, a nervous way. Um, because I knew that he didn't catch it, so I just wanted to say it again <laughs> with a little bit of condescension. So after snorkeling, we get back to the boat. Finally, we get a little bit of expose on uh, Toomey. Second episode, microaggression. Uh, she is about creativity. Her friends, uh, her family are all type A accountants and lawyers. But Toomey is an artist. Can I interject? Yeah, of course. And say that Toomey and I were friends before either of us got casted on Below Deck. Really? Oh. That's awesome. She Toomey's seems really great. cool. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, Nick's very and attractive when, to her. Ew, Nick. Why are you being a, such a hoe? I just said she was pretty. She is pretty. But you know, you jump from me to Toomey. <laughs> You're also still and very Toomey pretty. Toomey to me. 
I don't appreciate it. So to me, it's, about, it's not about Nick. Let me just say this. Yeah. And so is the Polish girl, and so is uh, the one you uh, fight. Yeah. The Polish girl's pretty homely. Yeah, Ashley's hot. The Polish girl's hot. You know who's you know who's hotter I than was, all of them. I will me of course. It Dylan don't Captain. Captain. hot Captain Jason. Yeah. Hot yeah. Captain Fuck you. Jason. He's got a beer gut. No, I just want to say this. It makes him really. more hotter. It's kind and of more like masculine. an old mech kind I of gut. I literally texted to me while I was filming, like, girl, I'm having a really hard time. Help me. Yeah. And to me. Gave me all the support I needed, and she was super nice. Yeah, and like you can get through this. She like, seems I, really sweet. Uh, it's not about being sweet. She's fucking strategic, and she's really good at her job. She's an artist. What I'm not good at is being strategic. Gabby, don't what? Get in trouble. Make we it don't, about me, Gabby. We don't want to turn this into a little therapy session for you. Okay? Why? <laughs> all right, we have a show to cover, and you fell asleep on us last time, so we can't do this. <laughs> Okay, fine. All right, so she said she's an artist, Pat. Nick, do you want to tear that to shreds? Oh, I saw that <laughs> tablescaping. Uh, what is, uh, what's the girl with the funny name? Bugsy. Last? Bugsy, she is not. Well, I think she's pretty but talented. But Kermit loves it. Uh, all right, so um, let's get to lunch. Fuckface has gone rogue and made cookout food before anyone's asked for it. Um it seems like Toomey has a real passion for tablescaping. Oh, and that's yeah. what it takes to be great. Yeah, so she will be great. And she will be great. There's been great day. stuff, and she's a sweetheart. And, and but we did read the same book. I mean, it doesn't make you an expert in a day. Yeah, yeah, tablescaping no, by Bugsy Jones. <laughs> um, so <laughs> fuckface is from Philly. We've covered this ad nauseum. Um, when he's done drinking beer in Philly and throwing batteries at baseball players, he wants a <laughs> sandwich. So that's why he's made barbecued ribs. <laughs> barbecue chicken, potato salad, and something that exists really only on the fringes of the sandwich umbrella, cheeseburgers. So Brian calls for Asia while she is catering to the needs of the children above, and he decides to just start calling for hands after 30 seconds of uh, no response. Um, he has no idea where anyone is. Um... Gabby, have you ever seen this kind of thing before on boats? Not on, not on the yacht. No, I have not. The I've chef seen, just going. It's time. I've seen this in time. restaurants because we have ticket times. Right. Every ticket time is twelve minutes. In restaurants, I can vouch and say, like, "Hey, you ordered this. You're getting this. Sure. Let's go. Right. Let's move it." Sorry, you were uh, at the bathroom. Sorry, I took a shit. Right. I have never seen a chef on a yacht. Be it plate food, unless the chief stew has already told them. Right. Hey, they're seated. They're yeah. seated. Right. So fuckface is truly a I, fuck face. I cannot disagree or agree. All right. Wow. So, um. By the way, we should call this uh this meal lunch for drunks. I mean, that's all it was. I it's barbecue like, ribs like, and sandwiches. And this piece but of that's shit. Lung, that. He's right. Yeah, he is right. And this piece of shit, he should just have that annoying, really uh, gaudy STK neon like massacre right. in his galley. Yeah. Just put that behind you as you prepare all this fucking Las Vegas. Day glow smoke. kind of horror yeah. right behind him. Yeah. Uh, all right. So he is asked to slow down a bit and he is not happy. Uh, lobotomy candidate, uh, 10 out of 10. Uh, get him to an ice pick or something like that. I feel so. I can't talk like that. He says, I can't reheat it. There's nothing I can do. <laughs> <laughs> I have an idea. Keep the food warm Jump until the they're boat. ready and then that? fuck your own face. So he has learned something after all of this, this entire debacle, this timing fiasco. Um, and the two things that he's learned is one, it's Aisha's fault. And two, <laughs> that he's going to be late for dinner on purpose as a result of this entire thing. Um, this to me was his worst yeah. uh, transgression. Yeah. What a horrible, Do you horrible guys think attitude. it's worse though? Question for all three of you. Yeah. You're all assholes. Felicia, I, I, I'm Felicia, saying, Nick and no, Pat. no, I'm sorry. I'm speaking. <laughs> oh, I thought you were done. I thought you no, finished I'm the question. No, I'm sorry. I thought you words paused. were coming out of my mouth. They yeah. weren't. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to ask you all was, is yeah. it worse than Matt from last season yes. faking a knee injury to this? Yes. 
because what? Matt uh, one is sniveling. helpless. Yes, one sniveling. My least favorite quality. The other is petulant. Uh, mm. uh, not good quality, but probably not my least favorite. No, I wouldn't call it petulance. I would call it. Wait, I want to hear from Patrick too. I would call well, it psychopathy. Well, I have a question for you, Gabby. Thank ha- you. Have you worked with a douchebag as a chef on one of these things? I, de- I assume definitely on the land you have because they're all douchebags. Have you ever worked uh, on a boat with a chef this douchey? Yes, absolutely. First of all, chefs on a boat, some of them didn't earn their chef title. Some of them are cooks, and some of them would never make it on land in a Michelin star restaurant. Or Arby's. Or fucking Burger King. There was a chick last year that prepared nachos. Well, she was also homophobic and... um, And a Russian spy. Russian. (laughs) There was also a girl that she was folding towels and cleaning toilets 24 hours earlier. I'm 50% Uh, Russian, and it's just been such a difficult thing. We're not really going to rehash those things. I think we all seen how ridiculous that was. But yeah, these people fucking slither their their way onto these yachts full of sea rats. Mm -hmm. And we're sea rats, but we know what the fuck we're doing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you guys do. And I will say, Dylan, I agree with you that his petulance extends so far that it becomes uh, psychopathy. Mm -hmm. But the definition of petulant is childishly sulky or bad tempered. Yeah. That's this little piece of shit. Mm Mm-hmm. Any advice for how to reconcile with... Well, he's go- literally Russian Googling heritage. vocabulary right now. So the I was just ask- double checking. I said it <laughs> All right, so we got to move on <laughs> to the next portion of the show. But before we do, let's take a brief... <laughs> a brief pause so that I can find where I am in my notes. Sure. And I am right here. Culver is Gronk. He says it. And uh, he says it's strong, and he is 100% right about that. He is dependable. He is huge. He eats tuna and mustard. Uh, just get him the ball. Mm-hmm. Just get him the ball, and you'll win the game. I really love this guy. Who and said that? Tom Brady. Well, not that diet. Said what? Huh? Said what? That he's drunk? <laughs> no, what you just said. Get him the ball? Is there a, is there a person on the show that literally said that? No. Yeah, Culver said I'm, I'm like Gronkowski. Oh, what, shit. What you, oh, yeah. What never. you've done again, Gabby, is okay, well, you've moved the out. mic very, very cut far away out. from your I face. I know, because I did not want to be heard. Cut this out, mm. sir. Uh, all right, so dinner is at 8.30. Jamie wants to have sex with Magma, and the guests are ta- uh, taking um, disposables with their thumbs for cocks. Uh, can we get to the anchoring? Well, I think the anchor... Oh, uh, was that dinner prep or we're going to get to dinner? Because I We're not at dinner yet. Oh, okay. Uh, the anchor thing does seem a little scary to me, but B- uh, Benny definitely came off as a complete pussy. Yeah, so Benny makes the whole process take uh, 25 minutes longer than it should. He tells Britt to come have a look at how impossible this thing... <laughs> this uh, this anchor <laughs> tweeving or wh- whatever it's called is. Um, threading. Threading. And the captain is not happy about this. Um, it's neither, really not that hard. Dylan. No, it doesn't seem that hard. All you'd have to do is take that... Uh, that you just... F- you coil it. Have you done it before? Yes. What's it like? It's not that treacherous. Right. Mm. Okay, I have to move the microphone away again. How's that uh, gummy drop flume? What did you do to me? <laughs> no, I, I don't want to interrupt you guys again. I literally am going to try to not. But Well, Gabby, I mean, you need we need to hear coiling, from you. That's why you're coiling here. Coiling a fucking anchor is really not that hard. No. It's just when the anchor comes down, you direct it in a circle like yeah. a snake. Right. Like, like a snake. Like in India, you see the snakes are coiled and they're like... <laughs> Or when the sea rats get really drunk and Shut all up. fuck nope. each other. No, not the sea rats. <laughs> all right. So what's well, Wes doing? Wow, someone's jealous. I'm gonna move the. I like Wes. I'm gonna move the microphone away. Oh my god! Oh, so, uh, what's going on there? Bratini has a bit of a chat with Benny about chilling the fuck out, and after fucking up the anchor twiddling, he teaches her a thing or two about not knowing what the fuck she's doing. He d- Oops. I can't speak on this, so oh, right, I'm gonna right. move this away. Just get drunk by myself. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when I was seeing this fight between Britt and Benny, I'm like, wow, these two are really having it out on the deck. I was like, it made me think, what's happening with that Gabby and Ashley uh, situation? Shut up. <laughs> I hate you. So Ryan is spooning cat food into tortillas, and we find out that Scott, Aisha's boyfriend, <laughs> uh, who she's been traveling with, is named Scott. Um, Womp, womp, womp. Did you say cat food and 
Yeah, that's what he's doing. Let's get to dinner. So Ryan is cooking the food that every fucking person on Instagram who knows anything about food is sick of. Um, it is birria. If we go on Instagram right now, you will see birria tacos, quesadillas, ramen fries. Enough with the fucking birria. But this guy knows that these TikTok um, you know, pelicans will suck this entire thing down. <laughs> now... Um, uh, also, Birria's goat. It's been bastardized by American palates and the, bastardized the further. Goat. No, not the goat. The protein used is goat. Gabby, will you just get drunk by yourself? My God. If you are going to talk, it's got to be in the mic. So, um, it's worse to talk off mic. Ryan speaks of Mexican food the way a piece of shit who can only cook stunt food would speak of Mexican food. He likes it because it's simple. Mexican food as we all know, is very complex. It's a very complex cuisine. It's criminally undervalued and underappreciated by most often pieces of shit from Philadelphia, but also by a lot of people. So Captain sits down for dinner, and we once again explore the horrors that came as a result of his thrill-seeking. <laughs> this man is so dangerous. How many episodes are we going to... Over, under... Five, we see this news clip. And I'm not complaining, to be honest, but it is funny how they keep going to the well. And again, mea culpa, not Captain Sandy fall off the way. Right. But by the way, I have to say, his good looks definitely shaped the heroism. Yes. Yeah. The, the uh, what do you call it? The narrative. Yes. If he was a fucking pig. Right. They'd be like, this guy almost killed a bunch of people. Holy shit, he's good looking. Hey, get over here. I know. If, if, if he was a Bruce Falange looking <laughs> motherfucker, or, they'd have him thrown in prison. That uh, weird looking guy who filled in for Captain Lee. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That guy would be in solitary Captain confinement. Sean. Well, they would have made up a story. Captain CNN would have made up a story of him. Like, he left the boat. He actually called before it crashed. <laughs> right. <laughs> Get me off the boat, please. Come pick me up. All right, so he demonized the bastard. Uh, See what good looks do to people? Yeah, it's incredible. Oh, so uh, let's get no, to what. You guys are fucking good looking. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's get to White Glove Birria Tacos. Uh, this is a. Uh, I mean, it is a culinary embarrassment, the likes of which we haven't seen in some time. Uh, it's like they're serving duck riette. They do it at the same time. It's like synchronized swimming, but it's poorly made Instagram tacos. It's truly like cataclysmically sad. Next course after three tacos is a milkshake. <laughs> I mean, we're going to have to start getting into negative pots with this guy. <laughs> That's zero pots. And I'll think Two about minus five. I'll think about next week whether we venture into the dark, dark waters of the negative pot scale. Because, you know, once you go there, you can't come back. So it does quite upset me. You know that uh, I will say Mexican not being simplistic is one of the first culinary lessons you taught us on this podcast. Yep. And I've never forgotten. What's wrong, Gabby? And. Uh, that that threw me for a loop when you said that. I, I was excited to hear right. you were, you were going to bring in heat, mm -hmm. and you didn't you didn't disappoint. Thank Dylan. you. So, uh, Captain heads off, and so do the rest of the crew. Magma guffaws at Jamie's body, and then calls her boyfriend. She tells him that she loves him fifteen times, but let's see how many episodes it takes for her to fuck another sea rat. <laughs> Next morning. Next morning. Jamie comes up for a chat. Low Tide once again. I'm very concerned that this is going to be a thing, a thing that amounts to nothing. It's the, the new dock. Yeah. The worst part. Uh, but we're already going to have docking. So yeah, if it's, so like, if it's, it's like another dock, docking. Yeah. It's docking twice. The worst part of below deck is the Mission Impossible stings that. I feel like you guys are upset because you've been being played with. Yeah. What do you mean? We don't like that's, it. Oh, is, yeah. This is why you keep talking about the docking and yeah. the anchoring. Right. It's because you guys keep hanging on these ledges. We feel like that uh, that innocent young mm -hmm. woman you watched earlier today. Mm -hmm. it's, it's our self-appointed jobs to explain to the national audience when they're doing yeah, these but, things. But they're not, they're I not, think no one would ones, realize these nuances if but it, we were not here. They're not the ones here. They're not the ones seeing it. They're not the ones involved how shitty it feels for someone to build you up. Right, right, right. Now, Gabby, we don't uh, want to turn this into a therapy session for you, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got to get to that. Also, you need, you need to DM Magda. 
Because you seem super obsessed with her. I am not super obsessed with like Magda. A, she's got a boyfriend. I'm going to have a boyfriend. I'm going to have a drop. I have a next, wife. She I'm going to have Jason a drop up. next week. Uh, it's a Dr. Evil <laughs> going liquid hot magma. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> a mosquito in here. Fuck y'all. Summer's coming. So Jamie comes up for a chat. Uh, oh, we said that. Low tide. So let's get to breakfast. Um... <laughs> It is Dupar's, but how Ryan wants to do it. Uh, we've got <clears throat> pancake dollars and a giant breakfast glizzy. It looks like Camp Pendleton food. Um, it's super. Camp Pendleton, that's in San Diego. It's yeah. the nicest fucking base. Right. Mm-hmm. And how I'm saying you. the food that the army men and women eat there is <laughs> just as good or better than the breakfast glizzy flopped on this plate Someone with a bunch get of pancakes. The dog. Someone get the dog. Um, mm-hmm. All right. So. I, I'm taking once in, again zero pots. I'm zero. taking in all all the uh, the the knocks on his food. Zero knots. I get it. Yeah. I will say, if it was me on this boat, I mean, he'd you would absolutely it. slay. Yeah. This is my wheelhouse, <laughs> pun intended. Because you're wet. Trash. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, you're trash. Wet? Trash. Trash. Fil- uh, trash. Filthy yucky normie. Oh, okay. mm. Hey, Dylan, yeah. you you did uh, mention quickly that Jamie reported to Captain Jason that apparently uh, Benny P is sitting down. You you mentioned that. Yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry. I said that verbatim. Did you hear? I didn't catch it. Um, All right. So let's get to Benny doing something on the boat that he's scared of because he's claustrophobic. So as the (laughs) chain comes in and up, Benny says one wrong move and you're gone. Sucked up like loop, you know. But the thing about the chain is that it's crawling at such a slow pace that (laughs) I I think dare he might be or dare I say I think he's over reacting and it reminded me and that's why i'm so frazzled right now because i'm trying to cue a clip as i talk but it reminded me of this moment in austin powers when he kills a man with a steamroller you guys want to watch this sure sure yes pat just brought this guy up now he's the one who ended up in a fire pit he's like i'm burning that's will ferrell same uh oh right yeah Go, oh, they reused that guy. guy. S- same bit over and over. Yeah. All right, check this out. This is what Benny was like down there. Careful, Austin. No! <laughs> this is Michael McDonald from Mad TV. Watch out! Watch out! <laughs> See, isn't it exactly, exactly like that? Exactly like that. Wait, it's exactly like that. That's finish? he gets crushed. Yeah, he dies. Uh, but uh, that. This is when I started to like Jamie because Jamie was like, okay, wimp, get get the fuck out of here. Where's Culver? Right, and then starts laughing at him. <laughs> so um, <laughs> he hurts his foot. He begins um, writhing and whimpering and needs to be pulled out immediately. I, I th- see your screenshot that you have right now. It looks terrible. I think he uh, pissed his pants when he did it. It's Benny in the wet. Yeah. Benny and the Wets. That's uh, episode title. So um, <laughs> expect one of those an episode. The guests depart the boat, and um, we get to our first tip of the vacation. Captain says, uh, "Let's get to a bit of a mating." I mean, this guy is a one-trick pony. He's Did he constantly say mating. He Did said, he say mating? He said, "All right, everybody, let's get to a little bit of a mating." <gasps> mating. He knows he's doing that. He yeah. knows he's doing that. Uh, Thank you. One time, I don't a feel bit comfortable with that. I really don't. I know. Me neither. And Gabby. when you say it in that accent, I especially don't feel comfortable with that. I know. I know. I know. And I feel the same way, Gabby. I feel the exact same way. <laughs> Back in like uh, the late '90s, uh, FX had this uh, kind of rival to the Man Show called the X Show. I remember. And they lasted had- one season. I, I can't remember who hosted it, but I'm sure they're around kicking around. But uh, they had like a uh, like a pickup artist essentially yeah, come yeah. on, and he was like, "That was like a a move." He said, like purposely fuck up words to make them like yeah, uh, yeah. subliminal messaging. Right. Uh, and yeah, the hot captain made them want to fuck right. him. Mm-hmm. Do, you go have, do you want to go have a nip? How am I supposed nip, to feel a, better a about this? Yeah, kind of thing. Does oh yes, any- right. Great. Right. That was good. That was quick. You're a nerd. We know that. Mm-hmm. I'm more. Which how, one? How am I supposed to feel better about that situation? Gabby. It's oh, me. shit. I'm fucked up. All right. We're going to have Yeah. To yeah. Yeah. You're Yay! fucked up. Yeah. And, and I'm okay. so fucking happy for you because Gabby. you're here. Yeah. You're cutting it up and you're just, uh, I'm, I'm really happy you're here. We are. 
Yeah, I really, and I don't mean that sarcastically. I was really trying to understand what he was saying, but I just realized, yes, I'm fucked up. So. I've, it happened to me last week. Dylan uh, skewered me on the podcast. It's well, not a pretty thing. I feel thing. like I'm going to be about skewered. If no, we're going to no, shut the fuck up. I would never skewer you. I would skewer Pat, you know, incessantly. Uh, but well, not Pat you. can take it. He has a family and a child. I don't. And despite... Uh, and he has a life to live for. I'm a fucking sea rat. No, no, you're, no, no, Gabby. No, you. you're not. Yeah. Jokes. Oh my god, this is not. I wanted to give you a compliment, despite like n- undoubtedly falling off a cliff. Uh, but <laughs> you still have these moments of greatness. You're really <laughs> making me laugh. I know you're making me. You're laugh. my favorite. I made you laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, even if uh, that's what we said, guys, Gabby. Are you guys being weird? No, no. Weird. no. Gab, I don't like the collective. No. <laughs> No, we do it a lot. Shut Gabby, up. stop it. So the guests depart the boat and we get to our first tip of the uh, vacation. Mm-hmm. Um, Hot Captain tells them that they've got communication problems. And then, Pat, we get to our first tip of the season. Now, before the numbers, he also says they have a lot to approve on because they weren't that bad. Not like right. launching a boat into a marina filled with people. Bad. Just <laughs> right. right. They weren't that great. <laughs> yeah. So uh, 16 we're, grand. We're 16 grand, uh, 13, 52 each. Don't say 16 grand because it was European money. I thought it was, I thought it was US. It wasn't. It was fucking Australian. Say it. AUS. She's dead wrong. It was, it was. I'm not dead wrong. Gabby, I'm gonna have to stop you there or Bravo (laughs) PR is gonna be pissed. So, uh, Toomey says she's gonna spend it on Botox. Um, and. She doesn't need it. I I don't care what they said they're gonna spend it on. That is not the. The, it was twenty grand AUS. <laughs> okay. okay, so Jason, I like hearing what they're going to spend it on. It's like, um, have you ever seen the Italian job yeah, with Mark yeah. Wahlberg mm-hmm, and yeah. and they split their money and they're all discussing what they're going to get it, it on. Matter. And then Edward Norton flips the script on him, kills the old man, steals all the things, and doesn't have any ideas of his own. So he buys the stereo. He bu- he buys the other stuff that those people yeah, want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or it's like uh, an American Gangster when Denzel Washington. Knows not to spend too frivolously. So Jason says he's going to be handing out a special award later. Gay camp counselor. That's a new one. Oh, that's wow. a lot of fun. Also called hazy. So uh, speaking of camp counselor, he is asked by his female employees what his sign is. He, like me, is a Libra. We all have the same sense of balance and jawline and body type. He's like, I'm a penis. <laughs> I mean, a Libra. Um, the uh, They are rather <laughs> transparently... <laughs> Uh, signaling that they want to fuck him, and he is loving it. Shut this down, boss. Tell them to take it easy. Don't smile and say, all right, I'm watching you. It's too sexy a corrective measure. It won't work. <laughs> By He's the way. push a T writing yes. a jingle for McDonald's. Yes. He's loving it. Those right. cameras aren't there. It's going down. Oh, yeah. Magma. Oh, yeah. Is... Drop. Nighttime. So uh, Magda is hammering Grand Marnier. Wild move. Um, and we arrive at the award ceremony. I love <laughs> this so Pat, much. Can we get a roll call? Uh, we thought that uh, I, I, I thought that this was going to be a, an award to the woman he was most lusting after, mm-hmm. but no. It's a rather diabolical instrument to shit on the person who needs motivation the most. <laughs> Sir Alex Ferguson wasn't the greatest manager of all time because he mastered the 442, you know? It was because of his man management. He um, was fast, though. No, he was an old, old four, Scottish four, two, man. Though. No. Just shut up. No. So um, this is not going to fucking happen. Um, is, of course, Benny's response. So um, we must move on to find out what's going to happen with Benny in that helmet. Uh, also, possible episode title. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so evidently the cat's That's better. The cat- Mine was forced. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Bip, 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 Benny and the helmet. <laughs> uh, so evidently the captain is going to be joining the crew on nights out sometimes. HR nightmare, but I love it. Let's get to dinner. <laughs> Uh, Culver is furious at Benny's lack of commitment to team awards. He is Gronkowski. He is Crab Cakes. He is Maryland. I absolutely love his conviction to this. He's like, what are you doing? The guy gave you a helmet. <laughs> Tradition. You got to wear it. Tradition. We're a fucking team, man. <laughs> dude, wear it with pride, dude. Yeah. And he's like, who wouldn't want to wear this? <laughs> it's unbelievable. I do love him. He's a. <laughs> he's so funny. He's a so, retriever. Benny is spitting 
on the um, the award and then is bumming everyone out with his sad, sad tales. Now, last week, he said chill to Bertini for um, asking him about his mother's cause of death. But it turns out he could have simply just said cancer. He tells Aisha not just that it was cancer, but he kind of breaks down the... Uh, spread of the cancer from the lungs to the brain he was just very much more open tonight mm. well, he's gotten to know them he's had more time yes the cause of death was lung cancer that spread to brain cancer yeah it was a priv- pretty vivid insight in how your body can just absolutely turn on you right. at any moment you know um i am really really fucking shocked because we know each other pretty well and when I said that the cause of death was lung and then brain cancer, I had in parentheses now is when Nick talks about COVID. <laughs> and I really, <laughs> really thought. That's sad when you think you know what uh, some of you have been creatively doing. What well, we say all next. know oh. what we're going to do creatively. Yeah, you but hey, I'm evolving because you yeah. didn't, didn't get bring you. it up. Look who didn't bring it up. And I that don't wouldn't really even get be an, ev- an evolution. It is a funny bit. I, I, but I don't. He got hit by a car, had lung cancer and brain cancer. He died of COVID. Oh, okay. <laughs> I guess, I guess I'm just back to living my normal life. And right. I want to put those two, two years of just Behind being lied you. to by the. Right. Okay. <laughs> so then we get, uh, <laughs> then we get some C-Rat pain between Asia and Benny. She shares all of her atrocities, and we must move on to Captain arriving and seeing well, that I- Benny is not wearing the beautiful award bestowed to him. Well. When uh, when Benny was talking about all that stuff and his sobriety and whatnot, I was getting really depressed. But when fucking Captain Jason showed up, like it's fucking odd. Yeah, yeah. it's party. Life's too short. Yeah. Oh, I told get my, it. I told myself I was gonna have a get it rattlesnake cue sound queued up right before they went out. Uh, we end the evening with a very productive chat between Benny and Jamie. Well, it was I- actually an imp- impromptu employee review, which is very popular in the. Uh, right in the C-Rat world, world yeah. yeah. And speaking of productivity, I think this episode's been incredibly productive. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to say about the the hot captain and his hilarious hazing technique. I feel like he should have. It was a misstep to give it to the one of the actual pieces of shit on the boat, right? Who can't handle it and then just gets more offended and it caused a riff. He should have gave it to Culver, right? right. And then Culver would show how funny it is. Right. Be like, hey, Culver, you're a big dumb idiot. Wear right. this. Right. And then Benny would wear it next time. And then you could just give it to Benny for like seven consecutive <laughs> right. charters. Exactly. Uh, tonight, the award goes to Benny again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, we got to get out of here. Jump in the comments. Let us know what you thought about the episode. Um, <clears throat> follow Gabby on the social meds. Uh, she's yeah. a fan favorite. Show her love and make sure she gets renewed for season two or four or five or whatever the fuck is going on. Um, in this world of Below Deck, thank you very much for coming on. Thanks for having me. I don't want to cut you off, yeah. but yeah. I'm a little fucked up. So thanks, everyone, for listening to the show. Thanks. <laughs> You're like me. I can't end episodes. I'm Can so bad. Can you not do your little emphysema cough while yeah, I'm, I'm dying. speaking? Right. It's a nervous cough. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, hi everyone. Thank you so much for having me on. Yeah. I love Dylan. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> I laughing. love you. Uh, let me do this again. He's crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What are you gonna say? Uh, Dill. Go on, say it. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, we'll see you next week. For no, another fuck b- off. I'm talking. Okay. All right. Thank you for having me on another Below Deck podcast. This is Gabriella from Below Deck. Gabriella Barragan. <laughs> Shut up. You always say it wrong. So fuck off. Barragan. Gabriella Barragan. That's exactly that. what he said. That's not what he said. Yes, he said it in more flair. I would have Gabriella Barragan. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Barragan. All right. Can I finish a fucking sentence? Mm-hmm. Sentence. You don't have to Is do me when word? we went out. I said bon Okay, voyage. great. All right. All right. Everyone, listen here. Can you say my name? Because yeah, yeah, everyone likes it. Oh, say it again. No. <laughs> <laughs> Smart move. Everyone, thank you for coming. Yeah. Oh. And watching the show. No, not no. Co- I said. All coming. right, guys, we'll be back. No, in a couple- actually, what I was saying was. <laughs> <laughs> this is a good bit, though. She, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
Thank you, everyone, for tuning in yep. to another Below Deck podcast. It's my favorite podcast. This is Gabriella Berrigan speaking from another Below Deck podcast. I said that already. Yep. Say permission to leave the boat. Permi- permission to leave. Don't yell at me. Oh. <laughs> Say it. This is Gabriella Berrigan from Below Deck Sailing Out Season 3. Yeah. Thank you for listening. Please tune and in. You're watching That's don't be, So Raven. Don't be poor and pay for the Patreon. They're paying. But still, keep paying. We love you guys just like we love Gabby. <laughs> the hatchets have been buried and we are moving forward to episode three in a couple of days. We love you guys. Bon voyage. Pat, say goodbye. Bye. Gabby, say goodbye. Ciao. You already said it. Bye.